by show of hands, raise your hand if you still think Pluto is a planet. Okay, okay, now, by show of hands, let me know if you've ever had an awkward encounter with someone because of miscommunication. All right, so Pluto's planetary status and social mishaps have one thing in common. They show us just how important definitions are. Because words are pretty tricky. When we're all speaking the same language, we sort of assume that when I say one word, that's going to make sense to both of us. But if I say the word planet, you might think of Pluto, you might think of Earth, and you might think of Tatooine or Alderaan. <laughs> so we need to get more specific with words. If I said gaseous planet, solid planet, fictional or real, that gets a little bit more specific. And the word planet originally comes from the Greek word planos, which means wanderer, because if you're in ancient Greece looking up at the nighttime sky, that's how you see the planets, as the things that move across the sky. That's the only real definition or specificity you need to define them from the other fixed, mostly fixed, points of stars in the nighttime sky. But technology has advanced a little bit since ancient Greek times, can we all agree? Yeah? So as our technology has gotten better, and as scientists have made, been able to explore more of the solar system, they started to notice that there are a lot less similarities between Pluto and the other eight planets in the solar system, and a lot more things that Pluto has in common with stuff that was being discovered at the outer edges of the solar system. And would it be really fair if we just arbitrarily said, Pluto gets to be a planet, but all of this other stuff out there doesn't? That also could mean that we could come up with a new mnemonic device, you know, like my very excellent mother, for all of the other things that we were discovering at the edge of the solar system. Scientists decided not to do either of those. Instead, they came up with a new three-part definition for a planet. First of all, a planet must have a spherical shape. Does Pluto have this? Yep. Second, a planet must be orbiting around a star. Does Pluto do this? Yep. And the third and final thing is a planet must be the dominant thing in its orbit. So, when we have the sweet Earth and we have Moon, the Moon is orbiting around Earth. The center of gravity on which it orbits around is in Earth. However, with Pluto and its moon Charon, things are a little bit different. That center of gravity, or very sphere between them, is between them. They sort of wobble around a point together, sort of like two things on a teeter-totter. It's not really clear that Pluto is the dominant thing in its orbit. So, this makes Pluto a dwarf planet, pointing out that dwarf doesn't just mean small planet, it means a planet that doesn't fit that three-part definition. So, like certain fashion trends and other things from the 90s, you can still appreciate Pluto. We didn't boot it out of the solar system, it wasn't blown up. But, this points out something really cool about science that could teach us a lot about how to be better communicators, because science admits when it's wrong. It's constantly exploring things, it's constantly looking for new things to learn, and it's shaping its definitions and the way it communicates around this, unlike, say, a bad political leader or religion. <laughs> it's acknowledging when we need to change, it says, hey, I'm wrong. So, that's all that I have to be sharing with you tonight. <laughs>